Hi everyone, welcome to video number nine of the Intro to ArcGIS Online video series. We are slowly approaching the finish line and in this video, we are going to show off our map to the entire world using ArcGIS Instant Apps. We'll kick things off in our map document in the map viewer. We have the layers that we need to visualize. So let's uncollapse this black bar and what we want to do is now create an app. So select that, click on Instant Apps. Now there are three different applications you can build from this map. There's actually more, but this is the shortcut to going into these application builder. So what we want is Instant Apps. Select that, and that will bring you to a new page where you can choose different templates that best fit your purpose. So there are a lot of templates to choose from. The first thing you could do is isolate which template you can't use. And that's displayed with this warning bar on the template that tells you you are missing a particular feature on your map or you have the wrong layer. So this imagery viewer requires an imagery layer. So that makes sense. Now, if you want to read more about these templates, you can hit the down button here and I'll tell you the description of what the template is and also scenarios of when you would use these templates. Now the most common template you'll probably end up using is the interactive legend, the minimalist and the media map. So with the interactive legend, if we look at the preview of what our map would look like in an interactive legend, as you can see, we have our map here so we can play around and isolate maybe areas where there are low income and high property value. So that's what an interactive legend is. Now the next template you'll most likely use is the minimalist. And the minimalist is like the name suggests, very, very basic. You just have your navigation tools, your search bar. You can have a panel that tells the audience member the legend and maybe add some description of the map. So that's minimalist and some people are okay with this. The next one is map media. And the map media is going to be the template we'll use for this demo because there are a lot of options for simplicity and a lot of options to add more details to the application. So choosing this, I'm gonna go back and click on choose. It's going to prompt me to give this application a name. So I'm going to write Toronto Affordability App. My initials, remember, don't include hyphenation or any other special characters. I'm going to save it in my share folder. Leave the tags at it as it is. So the tags is what they picked up from the map. I'm going to click Configure App. And that will take me to the Instant App configuration page. I'm going to say, don't show this again, close this out. And here we are in the interface where we create our application. So in ArcGIS Instant App interface, you have the option to do your setup in Express. The Express setup is usually used when you don't have much time, but you want to stand up an app instantly. And then you also have the options to look at different screen size of your application. So that means that you'll know for sure that your app would fit on any screen size. And it's flexible with different types of devices. Now in the Express setup, there are only four quick steps to have your map ready. You need to first pick your map and then enable anything in terms of legend or maybe the pop-up. So this is hovering on pop-up, which is actually really cool because you have your mouse hover, you have that option. The next step is interactivity. So maybe have a layer list of all the layers on your map. So something like that. You also have social buttons. Step four is rearranging all those. So I can put all my buttons on one side that's Express Map. That's four steps and you have a map ready and, and ready for publish. So that was the Express setup. Now let's take a look at Full Setup. So to access that, click on the Expand button, click on Full Setup, hit Switch. And in the Full Setup, you have more ability to customize your application and the existing customization you had in the Express Setup. So instead of steps, it's divided by types or categories. 
So the first category is map. And here you have the option to type in the alternative text to provide people with vision impairment who can't see the map. So describe the, what the map looks like. In the about, you have the app detail, which allows you to customize whether you have a splash screen to introduce your user before playing around with the map or a header at the top. So that's, that's a couple of ideas in the app detail. I'm going to actually turn off that header. Location details, that would be your legends that you can have. The legend here, you can have the traditional legend of everything or cards. So there's more customization available for you to use in terms of how things look on your app. Hitting back, we are going to go into interactivity and you'll see there's way more customization. In the explore and navigate, there are more buttons for you to add or more tools. You can add a button for people to full screen their map, have that option available for them. And then you can also add a scale bar, a navigation boundary. So a lot of interesting features you can add on your app. In modify, you can allow people to switch base map here. So they can toggle around and play with it. So let's turn this off. We can also apply a swipe tool. So what is a swipe tool? Well, it is basically having two different layers that you can swipe between the two screen we see here, split by this line and compare the data set. So instead of this relationship layer, the reason why I created a household income as well as a real estate layer is because for the swipe purpose. So what do I mean by that? Well, first we need to turn on some layers So make sure my layer list is on turn it on and I'm going to turn off the affordability layer, bring in my household income and my Toronto real estate. And you can see I can swipe back and forth. Now, this is a very good comparison between income and the property price per neighborhood. We're looking at the same neighborhood geography. So that is what swipe tool is. So I kind of like this. I think this is very neat. Other options are showing the table so I can select on a particular layer and click on the table to see the tabular version of my data set if I want my audience member to see it. Usually I turn it off because keeping it simple and easy for your audience is key to building an app. Now going back into interactivity, we have the share buttons and the share are very standard. You can allow people to take screenshots. So that's the tool button here or allow people to print. For my social settings, I kept it on as it is so people can share the map via their social media platform. So we're going to close this window out, hit back and go back into my interactivity. And this time we'll take a look at search and search basically is that search bar where you can look for an address or use a current address. So this tool is very handy for your user because most likely your user wants to know the situation of their neighborhood. So add this in, I'm going to leave it because that is actually a very popular tool people ask for. The next one is URL parameter. Now you won't be using this much because it is a little complicated, but know that the option to set a predefined screen. So whether it is a zoom, I want this Mac or application to start at the zoom level. URL parameter is where you set that. The next one is time and the time is actually a very cool tool. Unfortunately, our data set don't have a time or date associated with the data set. But here is an example of a time aware map. This map here shows the reflectivity measure from NOAA, which is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And they have this data set time enabled so you can see most likely these are clouds kind of flowing through across America. And the user can pause the data set, watch it time frame by time frame. So that's the time widget or the time tool. Now going back into our instant app, let's hit back. And so we've covered everything in interactivity. Now in themes and layout, going into theme here, we can change the theme based on the color or the 
the mode we have. So I'm going to keep it as dark just because our base map is dark. We also have the ability to change some codes using CSS. For example, changing the color of other than white and black. So it's really up to you and your comfort level with CSS language. Once you're happy with the map, you can hit publish. Now, just because it's published, it doesn't mean that anyone can access your map. You actually need to change the share settings. So how do we do that? Well, it's going to have a pop up that asks you to change your share setting. So you can click on that. And it'll take you to the item page of your application. However, you don't actually want to just change the share setting for your application. You want to change it for the map and the layers. So it's everything that makes up that application. So to do that, I'm going to go into my content page. Go to my share folder. These are all the layers I've been working on, the map we created, and the application we just created. So selecting all the content in this folder, I'm going to hit share. And right now it's shared to just me, just the owner of the content. But I'm going to share it with everyone. I'm going to hit save. And this is going to tell me that I don't have permission because there are two layers owned by myself that are not shared to the public. And that just means that these two layers are just not in my folder or not in my selection, which makes sense if we go back and check. So I'm just going to say, go ahead, update those two layers because everything in our map, so all the layers we generated on our map needs to be shared publicly in order for that map or application to be available for people to see. So let's update. And that would change the icon here to, to indicate that it's now shared to the public. So we can go back into the configuration of our app. And what we're going to do is officially press publish again. So it's going to ask, are you sure? Yep, I am sure. And once you've published it, it's going to pop up and let you know that you can use this URL and open up a new window and see your app full page. Now, keep in mind, you do have to turn on your layers for your median income household and the Toronto real estate in order to be able to see the swipe or within your map. You can change that setting so I can actually go back to the configuration, go into maps open in map viewer. So open that map in that viewer. Make sure I turn off the affordability, turn on the real estate and the median income household. So that's underneath it and save it. Because remember what you save in your map document is what people will see as they open, whether it's a map or an application. So if we go back into the application here and hit refresh, you'll see that that change of layers is reflected. So that's perfect. That's what we want. Going back into app configuration, we can hit share and in share we can, that was the link we grabbed. We can also share it on our social media or you can embed it on a website by using the iframe tag in HTML. I'm going to go ahead and readjust the width. I'm going to do 500 to 450 height, copy this iframe code, go to an HTML sandbox just to show you, but basically pasting the iframe code here, I'm going to hit run and you'll see that our map shows up. Let me zoom in a bit and then you can play around. So this could be embedded into a site along with your stories. Go ahead and create some apps and share it to the world until our next and last video. Happy mapping!